So we're back here at this setup again and uh, there's been some slight upgrades and updates um, that I've made to this computer. It's the same one, it's a Dell Inspiron 518 except now I have a dual monitor setup going on. Of course it still runs Hackintosh but I've updated the Hackintosh to macOS Sierra 10.12.1 so the latest version and I've also made some hardware upgrades to this machine as well so we'll talk about that while I power this on okay so yeah also I've changed um, sorry for the camera shake I've changed it from a single or uh, a dual boot to a single boot so I got rid of Windows 10 I might put Ubuntu on the other partition but I found that Clover doesn't pick up when I because this computer has two hard drives in it Clover doesn't tend to pick up the Ubuntu partition when it's on another drive for some reason so I'm not sure it, it works just as easily when I select from the BIOS boot menu I just select to opt to boot off of the other hard drive so it works but I'm not sure how to get the Linux to show up on on Clover so yeah so like I said we're running the latest OS and um, to, to tell you about the hardware upgrades I've upgraded this computer to a quad core so before there was an E7300 Intel Core 2 Duo in here at 2.66 gigahertz 2.86 2.66 and now there is a Intel Core 2 Quad Q9400 at the same clock speed in there so I'm not losing any performance on the single core either because they run at the same the same frequency and I've also upgraded maxed this computer out to 8 gigs of RAM the only other thing is that I wish that I had a uh, solid state drive sorry for the, the random windows popping up um, let me just disable my software here so so you can see the screen looks black right now but that's just because it has a black background let me show you the dual monitors working so you can see the you know obviously the seamless transition but you can see the resolution difference between these two monitors this one runs at 1680 by 1050 and this one is at uh, 1366 by 768 I think so yeah big resolution difference let me just close this um, and show you that I have Mac OS El Capitan or not a Capitan what am I saying Sierra so the latest OS here so Mac OS Sierra 10.12.1 as you can see I've customized my about this Mac a little put my you know um, my computer information in here so you can see from last time there's a quad core in here now versus a dual core and then there's double the RAM that I had from the last video same video card um, so yeah with about the thing about this video card is it can do dual monitors like it is right now but it will not support dual monitors even for Windows um, if you're using HDMI and DVI combined it has to be done using VGA so I, I think maybe a DVI and a HD and a VGA would work but right now I have a HDMI and and VGA setup for this dual monitor with this one having the VGA input and this one taking the HDMI so let me just you know basically everything is the same spec wise about this machine other than the processor and video card so yeah it's running the latest OS and again it's basically running it perfectly you know obviously I wish I had a solid state hard drive for this computer but yeah so I mean not much else to say really but you know obviously the internet should be working connected yeah so the, yeah the internet works um, I'm not sure what else there is to show, you know, obviously you can hear the audio working. 
Um, yeah, so uh, like I said, I'm probably I'm probably gonna put Ubuntu on this other hard drive here, and I'll see what to do with that. I've been you know doing a little programming recently, so um, figure why not install Ubuntu. So yeah, and uh, I do virtualize Windows on this computer. Oh yeah, the other thing about this CPU is before I, I would have trouble with virtualization. That's because apparently the E7300 doesn't support virtualization, a feature called VT-X, Intel Virtualization Technology. And whenever I would use VirtualBox, it would tell me that there's an error. I can't run the machine. And it said it was only a requirement for 64-bit, but it still wouldn't work even when I tried to install 32-bit uh, operating systems. So after upgrading to the Q9400, I have that I don't have that problem anymore. So you know that's always good. And again, it runs you know smoother. I, I like having more RAM free. You know, obviously eight gigs is not a whole lot, but it's uh, you know I'd say the standard is moving from uh, eight to four gigs, or, or sorry, the other way, four to eight gigs as the minimum standard for RAM. So yeah, I mean, that's about it for this video. I hope, uh, you know, there's not much else to say because I kind of said that all in the first one, but if, uh, you know, if you have any questions about how to, you know, get this set up, if you want, oh yeah, just, you know, for people who have this model, um, I will say that I used the uh, the Mac Pro 5.1 SM BIOS. Yeah, that that one works pretty well for this machine and of course I use the same DSDT from the last setup for El Capitan so yeah if you have any questions about getting a setup like this working let me know and maybe I can help you and uh, thanks for watching guys bye